<laughs> what is burnout? How does it happen? And how, most importantly, do we heal from it? These days, burnout is everywhere, and it can impact people from all walks of life. From doctors and attorneys, all the way to high school students, truly no one is immune. But it wasn't what we were hardwired to experience as human beings. If you've been impacted by burnout, then you know how debilitating it can be. Unfortunately, with the invention of the light bulb, not only were we able to now work around the clock, but we are also able to disconnect from our own internal clocks and deny some of the very things that make us human, specifically rest. And maybe that's why they say, burnout is what happens when you avoid trying to be human for too long. According to the American Psychological Association, American workers experienced an increased rate of burnout in 2021. And according to the APA's 2021 Work and Wellbeing Survey, 79% of workers reported work-related stress in the month prior to the survey. Nearly three in five employees report negative impacts of work-related stress and those numbers are even higher in industries like teaching and healthcare. In this video, we'll talk about practical things you can do to avoid burnout in your life, and we'll specifically talk about ways to address your mental and your physical health. Why is this important? Because our health and well-being in the office and at work matters, and the last thing we need this year is someone going all office space on the printer at work. Burnout is seemingly less and less avoidable these days, and if you're experiencing it, it's important for you to remember it is not your fault, nor is it a reflection of your skills or competence. And it is possible to reverse the symptoms of burnout, so hang in there, I've got some tips coming right up for you. For more useful tips on how to build a life that you love, remember to like and subscribe by clicking subscribe and the bell below. If we haven't met yet, hi, I'm Dr. Therese and welcome to my channel. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and I love to help people who dream of life outside the typical nine to five make it a reality. I've been living my dream of living remotely and traveling the world since 2018 and I've helped thousands of people to take steps toward building a life they don't need a vacation from. So keep watching and let's learn how to create a more fulfilling, meaningful life that you love while we ditch hustle culture together. And for more practical wellness tips to help you maximize your life, check me out on Instagram at exploring.therapy. So first, what is burnout? Burnout is a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion caused by a prolonged period of stress coupled with inadequate resources to cope. It leads to feelings of overwhelm, which eventually leads to demotivation or apathy. In other words, when we feel stressed for too long with inadequate resources to cope, it leads us to burnout. In today's culture, burnout is exceedingly common, probably due to a variety of cultural and social factors. Burnout is fueled by unrealistic expectations, societal pressures, ignoring physical indicators of stress, stigma about rest, lack of boundaries, toxic productivity or glorifying busyness, lack of support by leadership or management, and lack of resources or education. Let's talk about what burnout isn't. Burnout is not just a day or two of feeling tired. Burnout is not reflective of a person's strengths, weaknesses, or talents. Burnout isn't proof that someone isn't good enough in general. Burnout is not an accurate reflection of whether someone is competent for a certain profession or role. And burnout is definitely not proof that someone is just a negative person. Symptoms of burnout can vary among individuals. Some signs of burnout in the workplace can include low motivation, lack of creative solutions, absenteeism, increased turnover, decreased job performance and decreased job satisfaction, and decreased quality of work. Are you suffering from any of these symptoms or difficulties? Well, remember that burnout is treatable. Even though it can feel extremely overwhelming and out of control to experience burnout, small adjustments can make a world of difference in the presentation of your symptoms. So here are my three steps that you can take to overcome burnout starting today. Number one, acknowledge. First, you have to see the signs of burnout in your life. Burnout doesn't just happen overnight. There are usually little clues and hints along the way that let us know that we are approaching burnout. Burnout is sometimes hard to identify because it has many faces. If you're suffering from burnout, you may have some, but not all of the symptoms. As a reference point, here are the physical symptoms of burnout. Exhaustion, oversleep, 
headaches, stomach aches, self-medicating with alcohol or drugs as a method of coping, insomnia, loss of appetite, poor immune response, and impaired memory. And there's even a longer list for the emotional symptoms of burnout. The emotional symptoms of burnout include irritability, impatience, apathy, anger, despair, difficulty concentrating, poor productivity, disengagement, cynicism, low engagement, helplessness, anhedonia, which is the loss of interest in activities that you used to enjoy, isolation, depression, anxiety, increased interpersonal conflict, and suicidal thoughts. In addition to the physical and emotional symptoms of burnout, which I just shared with you, here are some questions you can ask yourself to assess whether you might be experiencing burnout. If you like here, you can pause the video and grab a paper and pen so you can write down the questions and take some time to answer them in detail for yourself. One, do you work in a stressful environment and feel constantly overwhelmed? Have you lost interest in a job that you used to enjoy? Have you stopped doing hobbies that you used to enjoy? Do you feel underappreciated, undervalued, or unacknowledged? Do you have an unsupportive boss? Do you wake up with feelings of dread about going to work or starting your day? Do you constantly feel like you're failing at work? Do you feel out of control at work or in other areas of your life without a clear end in sight? Do you find yourself feeling feelings of intense resentment? Are you struggling with sleep, stomach problems, fatigue, back pain, or other physical problems to an extent that is not completely attributable to a diagnosed physical illness or injury? Do you feel isolated from loved ones or do you feel less sociable than usual for you? Do your loved ones complain that you're not acting yourself? And the last question, do you not feel like your usual self? So are you feeling burned out just hearing about burnout? And can you relate to any of these symptoms? If so, let us know in the comments below how you're getting on. The second step to dealing with burnout is action. After you've recognized that you are indeed dealing with burnout, it's vital to take different actions so that you don't continue going down the same path that took you to burnout in the first place. Here are a few ideas for compensatory actions to help you overcome burnout. First, work on those boundaries. Make sure to get enough sleep. Stop to eat and eat nutritionally balanced meals. Take time off of work and limit your time in work to what's only absolutely necessary. Take breaks. Practice healthy boundaries with social media. Start saying no to things that aren't absolutely essential or additive to your well-being. Readjust your expectations for what you can reasonably accomplish in one day. Schedule time for rest, schedule time for play, and schedule time for people. Second, seek support. Try finding a therapist. Read books that can better help you understand your situation and how to move forward. Lean on friends and communicate with them with what's been going on. Ask your boss or an ally at work for help adjusting your work demands. Vent your frustration or even seek a compassionate ear on places like Reddit. Find new friends if your current support network isn't what you need. Bumble BFF is a great place to start looking for friends. Super easy to use, not sponsored. I just think they're great. Be honest about what's going on with you with your support network. Ask for help if you need it. Next, embrace imperfection. Stop expecting yourself to be perfect. Recognize that failures are a part of growth. Being perfect doesn't contribute to your well being in any way. Next, focus on an internal locus of control which means focus on the things that you can control. Try to think of at least one positive thing that happened at work each day. Focus on one thing that you can move forward, no matter how big or how small. Don't focus on the things that you feel stuck in or volunteer for a mission that matters to you. Gratitude. Focus on the things that are going well. Write down what you're grateful for each day and express your gratitude to others. Next, Think about movement and mindfulness. Try to find a way to move your body every day beyond just sitting at your desk. Practice mindfulness for at least five easy minutes in the morning. Do 20 jumping jacks when you feel stuck. Try a yoga class. Get outside for a brief walk and get some sunshine. Try seeking a change of scenery. Get out of your house or your office, get some fresh air, go someplace new. Just do something that's a little bit different than your usual routine. Mindfully consume. Caffeine, processed foods, sugar, and alcohol can have a detrimental effect on your well-being, so consume them responsibly. 
The same goes for drugs, including marijuana. Notice how these substances impact your mood. And also, consumption doesn't just extend to food. Think about what you spend your time and your attention on, be it social media, television, movies. These are all things that make up part of your diet and the things you take in. So be very intentional about letting stuff in that's life-giving to you and keeping the stuff out that isn't. And the third step to overcoming burnout is adaptability. In order to prevent burnout from happening again, you have to lay down a different foundation. In other words, if you hop right back into old patterns and old boundaries and old ways of doing things, you're gonna go right down the same path that led you to burnout in the first place, and you don't wanna do that. So building habits that help you adapt better to stress is absolutely essential. Go for a gradual re-entry, do not. I repeat, do not hop right back into your old routine. Instead, slowly add in one to two more responsibilities each week and slowly reassess your situation and your well being. If you see your exhaustion or irritability return, stop and take a step back. Move slowly when it comes to taking on anything unessential. Reasonable expectations. Were your expectations of yourself even reasonable before? Chances are, if you experienced burnout, they probably weren't. What are more reasonable expectations that you can make for yourself? Give yourself permission to rest and take breaks and take days off when you feel tired. Consistent support. It's one thing to have friends that you can rely on in a crisis, but who's the support network that you can rely on on a more consistent basis? Make sure that you're carving out time for social connections at least once or twice every week or two, depending on your own particular preferences. Communication. Maintain open lines of communication with your boss. Check in more frequently at first as you readjust to certain responsibilities. And it's so important to be vocal when things feel overwhelming. Self-care. Create a self-care plan. Self-care should not be an afterthought or a response to stress. Self-care should be an investment made daily and weekly into your well-being. Do you tend to carry tension in your body? Then make sure you're scheduling regular stretching or massages as needed. Do you tend to order fast food when things get tough? Prioritize time to go to the grocery store this week. Did your boss stress you out? Journal every day and get in touch with your feelings. Here's something important to note. The more connected you are to your emotions and your physical sensations, the more equipped you are to respond with actions that can help you to heal. Emotions aren't a mistake or a waste of energy. They are helpful guideposts that communicate to you when things aren't okay and need to change. Having close awareness of your emotions and physical sensations is an essential skill when it comes to dealing with and coping with burnout. It is not easy to avoid burnout, but it really helps when you feel like you have the power to say no. So I created this free guide for you called How to Say No Without Feeling Bad About It. To get your free copy, just click on the link in the description below. So did this video speak to you? If so, leave a comment below with what part you found most helpful or what spoke to you. Be sure to hit like and subscribe and you'll be the very first to know when I share more videos on how to ditch hustle culture and build a life that you don't need a vacation from. Thanks for being here, bye.